Our missile defense program is not covered or limited by the new START treaty. That's about as simple a statement as I can make, and there's been an awful lot of debate about the uh, missile defense program and uh, allegations that it's limited by this treaty, so let's listen to the experts. Secretary of Defense, first, testimony before the Armed Services Committee on June 17th said the Quote, the treaty will not constrain the United States from deploying the most effective missile defenses possible, nor impose additional costs or barriers on those defenses. I remain confident in the U.S. Missile Defense Program, which has made considerable advancements, including the testing and development of the SM-3 missile, which we will deploy in Europe. Secretary of State Clinton, testimony before the Armed Services Committee on June 17th. Quote, the treaty does not constrain our missile defense efforts. I want to underscore this, she said, because I know there have been a lot of concerns about it, and I anticipate a lot of questions. Then she said about the preamble. The treaty's preamble does include language acknowledging the relationship between strategic offensive and defensive forces, but that's simply a statement of fact. It, too, does not in any way constrain our missile defense programs, close quote. General Chilton, Kevin Chilton, He's our commander, the United States Strategic Command. Quote, is the combatant commander, command also responsible for synchronizing global missile defense plans, operations, and advocacy? I can say with confidence, okay, this is our top commander. I can say with confidence that this treaty does not constrain any current or future missile defense plans. Now, the senator from Alabama talked about some effort here to uh, carry out some kind of a left-wing agenda. General Kev Kevin Chilton is the commander of our United States Strategic Command. I can say with confidence this treaty does not constrain any current or future missile defense plans. Now, the Ballistic Missile Defense Review Report, which was filed earlier this year, made it clear that the administration is pursuing a variety of systems and capabilities to defend the homeland in different regions of the world against missile threats from nations such as North Korea and Iran. They talked about the phased adaptive approach to missile defense in Europe. The Secretary of Defense and the Joint Chiefs of Staff have recommended the phased adaptive approach unanimously. These are our top military people. They're advising us. This is not some political agenda which is being implemented by this treaty. This is a military and a security necessity for this country. That's not just me saying it. This is the top military people of our country who are saying it. The NATO strategic concept. This is what NATO is saying about that phased adaptive approach, which has been critical, criticized during an earlier statement on the floor. This is what the NATO folks say about it. These are our allies. The United States European phased adaptive approach is welcomed as a valuable national contribution to the NATO missile defense architecture. Mr. President, the Armed Services Committee, in our authorization bill, Section 231B8, said the following, quote, there are no constraints contained in the New START Treaty on the development or deployment of effective missile defenses, including all phases of the phased adaptive approach to missile defense in Europe and further enhancements to the ground-based mid-course defense system, as well as future missile defenses. Admiral Mullen, top military, uniform military official in our country, Admiral Mullen, quote, I see no restrictions in this treaty in terms of our development of missile defense, which is a very important system. That's in front of the Foreign Relations Committee, chaired with such distinction by Senator Kerry. He said that in May of 2010. General James Cartwright, Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he's our number two uniform official, top uniform official. Here's what General Cartwright said, quote, all of the Joint Chiefs are very much behind this treaty we need START, and we need it badly. General O'Reilly again, 
director of our Missile Defense Agency. Quote, throughout the treaty negotiations, I frequently consulted with the New START team on all potential impacts to missile defense. The New START does not constrain our plans to execute the U.S. missile defense program. And this is what he added. The New START Treaty actually reduces previous, previous START Treaty's constraints on developing missile defense programs in several areas. We will have greater flexibility in using it as missile defense test target with regard to launcher locations, telemetry collection, and data processing, thus allowing more efficient test architectures and operationally realistic intercept geometries. Now, this isn't our civilian people who might allegedly or allegedly have some kind of a political agenda. These are our top military people in our country who are telling us there are no constraints on missile defense. Every single one of them support it. The people who are in charge of our missile defense system strongly support it. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff strongly supports it. And the suggestion that there's sort of a political agenda behind this treaty flies smack in the face of the sworn, not sworn testimony, they're not, they weren't under oath, we don't need them under oath, the testimony of our top uniformed military officials in this country. The suggestion that what is driving this is some kind of a political agenda falls completely flat. It runs directly counter to the testimony of these officials. Now, in terms of the preamble language, and this is where the pending amendment would seek to amend the treaty itself by removing this language, which of course kills the treaty. If you amend the treaty here, that's the end of the treaty. The full paragraph says that there, it recognizes the existence of the interrelationship between strategic offensive arms and strategic defensive arms, and that this interrelationship will become more important as strategic nuclear arms are reduced and that current strategic defensive arms do not undermine the viability and effectiveness of the strategic offensive arms of the parties. This statement is a long-standing, decades-old recognition of an undisputable fact. There is a relationship between strategic offensive and strategic defensive systems. It has been recognized in our, our nuclear arms limitation and reduction treaty since the 1970s. Listen, this is President George W. Bush on this subject. It is a joint statement with President Putin. July 22, 2001. Now, this isn't President Obama. This is President Bush, President George W. Bush. Joint statement, President Putin. Quote, we agreed that major changes in the world require concrete discussions of both offensive and defensive systems. We will shortly begin, and we all ought to listen to this, those who are charging that this is some kind of a agenda of President Obama and is not totally in sync what has come before in terms of star treaties, should listen to what President George W. Bush <coughs> said in 2001. <coughs> we will shortly begin intensive consultations, and I'll finish, I think I've run out of time, so I'll finish here, because this, thank you, I thank the chair. I, I think this is the one statement which is the clearest of them all. This is George, President George W. Bush. We, President Bush and President Putin, will shortly begin intensive consultations on the interrelated subjects of offensive and defensive system, close quote. This relationship is as old as our treaties. They've been made by, these statements of interrelationship have been made by Democratic and Republican presidents, and I would hope that this language would not be stricken. Uh, if it does, it will kill the treaty, and it would uh, kill it for a reason which is uh, totally uh, insufficient and runs the argument here runs smack again into the statements of support from our top uniform military officials.